In this lesson, we're going to cover section 4.4 out of the book. Okay, so we're going to talk about coordinates for points on the plane and what happens when we change our basis. So consider a point on the plane AB, something like 2, 3. Or we can plot it. We're used to plotting points on a plane. But what does 2, 3 really mean? When we say it's at the point 2, 3, what we really mean is we're going two units in the x direction and three units in the y direction. Think about this in terms of a basis for R2. Well, we're used, or we're familiar with the standard basis for R2, being the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. We can interpret these vectors as a vector of length 1 in the x direction and a vector of length 1 in the y direction. With that being the, the vector 1, 0, and in this direction being the vector 0, 1. When we talk about this concept, then what 2, 3 really means is 2 units in the direction of the first vector, then 3 units in the direction of the second vector. What we're doing is we're giving directions on how to get to our point based on our basis vectors. So we can think of this as not just coordinates of a point, but coordinates in relation to this basis. Because we're saying for this basis, these are the directions on how to get to our point. But what happens if we change the basis? As we've seen, there are many different bases for R2. Why do we use that, that basis? Well, it's convenient, it's easy to picture, and, but mathematically there's nothing special about it. It's just one type of basis. And we've seen that any point on R2 can be described using any basis. So, with this basis, with our standard basis, when we describe our point 2, 3, we can describe it as a vector, as the vector 2, 3, which means the description of how to get there, going 2 times the first vector, then 3 times the second vector. So you can see we're getting to a multiplication. And that's what we really have when we have coordinates. It's a multiplication. But what if we take a second basis? If we take this basis here, 4 minus 1 and negative 1, 2, or that is 4, negative 1, and that is negative 1, 2. That is, again, a basis. It's not the one that, we're normally, that we normally use, the one that we're used to and very comfortable with, but it is a basis. And we can describe how to get to that same point using that basis. What do we do? Well, we go once over the first vector, then two times in the direction of the second vector. It brings me to the exact same point. I've just gotten there a different way using a different basis. So with this basis, I can describe, or I can give directions on how to get there. I went one unit in my first vector direction, and then two vectors in my second direction. So I can describe, the, I can give the coordinates of that point, it's the same exact point, but now my coordinates are 1, 2, but they're in relation to the new basis. So you see, when you talk about coordinates, you aren't really talking about a concrete thing that's on, that can't be changed. You are talking about coordinates in relation to a basis. If you change the basis, the coordinates change even though the point itself is the same point. So when we use this basis, the, our second basis, we give it, if we call it B, we can write it this way. As the point V, in relation to the basis, B has the coordinates 1, 2. Those are the coordinates in relation to our new basis. This means our point is, as we talked about, one vector along our first ba basis and two vectors along our second basis vector. Or we can write it as a product where that's our first basis vector and that's our second basis vector times our coordinates 
equals 2, 3, which is the coordinates in our other basis, in our standard basis. So we are taking a matrix, multiplying it by the coordinates in our second basis, and it gives us our coordinates in our first basis. It's in two, so 2, 3 is really just the coordinates of the same point in relation to the standard basis. So we can write that as v in relation to the standard basis is equal to 2, 3. Our coordinates in relation to the standard basis is 2, 3. So when we write this, this equation, we are saying we are taking our coordinates in one basis and changing them to the coordinates in a second basis. We're changing our basis and we're describing how to change the directions to get to our point. So, brings us to this theorem. If we have a basis for a subspace, B of Rn, in our earlier example we talked about all of R2, but this works for any subspace, where that is the basis for the subspace, any vector that is in that subspace can be uniquely represented as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis. So in other words, with our basis, we can find a set of numbers where our point is the first number times the first basis vector plus the second number times the second basis vector and so on. That's unique coordinates for a point or for a vector in relation to our basis vectors. So for example, this is something we've been doing all along. It's just a slightly different way of thinking about it and describing it. So for instance, if we have a subspace and here is our basis, and we want to write that vector as a linear combination of the vectors in V, or in other words, we want to find the coordinates of V in relation to B. So, this is asking for the coordinates of V in relation to our new basis B. Or using the notation we have, the coordinates of V in relation to B. So how do we get that? Well, that is what we've been doing all along. We find from the augmented matrix the same solution we've been doing all along. So I'm going to do row 3, interchange with row 1. That gives me negative 1, 4, 2, 3. 0, 4, 2, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. And uh, do this on the next page. So minus one, four, two, zero, four, two, zero, zero, negative one. And it's three, two, one. So now I will do row one minus row two is the new row one. Minus one, zero, zero, three. 0, 4, 2, oops, that's not 3 there, that's a 1, 2, and 0, 0, negative 1, 1. And if I keep going, row 2 plus 2, row 3, the new row 2, 0, 4, 0, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. And finally from this, I can get that x1 equals negative 1, x2 equals 1, and x3 equals negative 1. So the coordinates of that vector in relation to my new basis is equal to negative 1, 1, 1. And just to put it in the terms that we had before, the coordinates of that point 
in relation to the standard basis are just the numbers we started with. One, two, three. Okay, so that is putting, that is showing the coordinates of a vector in a different basis. It's giving the directions on how to build that vector using a different basis. And here is the definition that we've been talking about. So if we have a basis, we have unique scalars where some vector equals the sum of those scalars with times the, the basis elements. That vector is called the coordinate vector of V relative to B or the B coordinate vector. And we denote it as that, the way we have we saw it just a minute ago. So, for example, here is a basis, and we want to find the vector when we've been given the coordinates in that new basis. So, here we're going to use the formula that the coordinates in our new basis backwards, that our basis matrix times the coordinates in our new basis is equal to the coordinates in the standard matrix. Coordinates in the standard matrix, because we use it all the time, we normally just give it the V. We will often drop the specifying that it's the coordinates in the standard matrix. So, th But that's what we're looking for here. So, this is just our basis matrix given in a certain order times 3, 5 equals. So what we're doing is we're saying 3 times our first basis vector plus 5 times our second basis vector. That is the coordinates in the standard matrix. So it's 3, 3 plus negative 5, 15, and that's equal to negative 2, 18. That is the coordinates in the standard matrix. Okay, so now in this case, we are given a basis, basis vectors. We're given the coordinates of a point in with our standard basis, which is the way that we're used to specifying coordinates. And we're being asked, find the coordinates for this vector in relation to my new basis. So how do we do that? Well, we have that B times V in relation to that basis is equal to the vector in relation to the standard basis. So if we want to go the other way, we have that V of V is equal to V inverse times V of S. We are given V of S. We know what B is, but we don't know what B inverse is yet. We have to find B inverse. So remember how to find the inverse? We have our, we put our matrix down. We augment it with the standard matrix, the identity matrix, and we row reduce. So row 1 minus row 3, a new row 3, 1, 0. And we keep going until we are all the way to row reduce echelon form. One plus row two, my new row one. In this case, it doesn't take too many steps. Oops, that is, this should be two, zero, negative one across there. And then 
finally uh, negative r2 is the new r2 and negative one half r3 is the new r3 just to finish it up one zero zero two zero negative one zero one zero zero negative one zero 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 one one half zero negative one half so that is my v inverse now i want to figure out the coordinates of v in relation to my basis it is b inverse which i just figured out times my coordinates in my standard basis and i just figured this out this gives me four minus one it gives me negative three and it gives me one minus one half so that equals three negative three and one half and those are the coordinates of my vector in relation to my new basis or the beta coordinates the b coordinates of my vector so this gives me this theorem if b is a basis for rn and let the b be the matrix whose columns are the vectors of my script b of my basis then b is invertible okay why is b invertible well part of being a basis is that you are linearly independent all the elements are linearly independent because it's a basis for all of our n in this case we're not talking about a subspace we're talking about all of our n that means you have n vectors linearly independent of size n you stick them all together because they're linearly independent they are going to be invertible that was using some of the things we've seen in previous classes in addition to that for every vector v in our n b times the coordinates in b equals v or equivalently writing it the other way those are the relations that we've just been playing with that we figured out earlier so this is the theorem that tells me how to change coordinates in one vector space or in one basis to coordinates in another basis okay now for the last bit of this course or of this uh, lesson we're it's going to get a little bit more complex we're going to use this idea to figure out what the equation is of an ellipse after we rotate it so if you aren't familiar with this this is the equation of an ellipse and in particular of the ellipse we have right here it's the ellipse that goes through three and negative three and through four and negative four on the y-axis that ellipse has this equation what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we are going to rotate it by 45 degrees so you can see here i have on the second one i have my original ellipse and i've rotated it by 45 degrees and we're going to find the equation of that rotated one and we're going to use the idea of changing coordinates so let's think about this in our original ellipse we have that equation that describes it so for any point on the ellipse it satisfies that equation that's what that means it's all the points on the plane that satisfy that equation and they just happen to be in the shape of an ellipse for that equation knowing what we know now about coordinates what does xy mean xy is the coordinates in relation to the standard basis so it really means x times one zero plus y times oops, that should be y times zero one which you can rewrite as the coordinates in relation to the standard matrix are the xy which is our basis matrix times the coordinates the coordinates just happen to be xy because we are in the basis the standard matrix but now we're going to change that so we've got something that is the same exact shape 
But imagine that your point XY, which was over here, after it rotates, it comes to there. So how do we get that new point? So we started with the point V, and it's become the point W. Our original basis was the basis we're used to, our standard basis. When we rotate, what happens to that basis? All that does is rotate by 45 degrees as well. So our point W has the same exact coordinates as V had, just in relation to a new basis. If it was, if in our previous one, it was two that way and three that way, well, in our new one, it's still two in that direction and three in that direction, or whatever it happens to be. But what is this new basis? Well, all we've done is we've rotated something. So it's the same length. It's just instead of pointing flat, pointing in the X direction, Y direction, it's pointing at 45 degrees. Well, we can use some trigonometry to figure that out. When we do that by using trigonometry, we get a new basis. Our first basis vector becomes that, and our second basis vector becomes that. So those are our new basis vectors. We can put them together into the matrix B, and using the formula that we saw earlier, our coordinates of V in the S direction, which is our point W now, is equal to that basis matrix times the coordinates in, sorry, I said that backwards, our coordinates in our standard matrix is equal to B, which is our matrix, times the coordinates in the basis vector, which is W. So that describes how we're moving from one to the, to the other. So our original point had those coordinates. Under the new rotated basis, we have those coordinates. That's how we get our coordinates in the new basis. But we can take this a step further and determine the equation for our new rotated uh, ellipse. So our new ellipse has this equation, the same exact equation, but where x0 and y0 are coordinates in our new basis. So these are coordinates in relation to our new basis. And now we want to calculate, we want to go back to our other basis, to our standard basis, and figure out, well, what would these be in our standard basis? We have our equations that, we're, that we've seen, or in the other direction. We know what our matrix is in the new basis, so we can calculate the inverse. So we have the inverse. Once we have that inverse, we take that inverse, multiply it by the coordinates in the standard basis, and we get the coordinates in the new basis. So our new point, is our B inverse times XY, which gives that. So if we want our, form, our equation now for that new ellipse, we just replace the XY with these new numbers, and we get this. And by doing this, we have now an equation for an ellipse that has been rotated 45 degrees. Now, following through this takes quite a, is quite involved, but this, this is a demonstration of how the idea of changing between coordinate systems with the technique that we just saw can make some mathematical calculations a little bit easier. It would be somewhat challenging to determine the equation for the rotated ellipse without doing something like this. When you understand how bases change, it's a lot easier to get this kind of a, an equation. That was section 4.4, and here are your suggested practice problems.